Okay, we should be live. Um, so let me just set a few things up, make sure that everything is working as intended. Um, as I am going to be talking for the entirety of this, um, I will not be, uh, you know, we can push the talk for the entirety of this. My uh, mic constantly. Oh, well, not my mic, sorry, my um, keyboard can be stuff. So, you know, it can be worse, but. So, when we've got at least Prime Haman and Sean watching, I can start up uh, that actual, you know, introduction and blah. But sadly, Twitch is quite slow at starting off, so it doesn't really show me able to go on to start with. Just for the ad playing. God damn it, Twitch. I suppose I am in the video now, so. Oh shit, that was. Um. Just subscribe to Twitch Prime. Ooh. Ooh. I love you. Quite a lot. I should totally do the same thing. In fact, I'll do it after the stream. Um, okay, so we've got this amount of watching, Twitch is being a little bit of a dirt, and it's saying that the person watching is me. Um, well, I've got people got make sure that's not true. So, I should mention beforehand that um, this is not in any way going to be um, like elitist or anything like that. It's going to be quite basic as it's people's first time in Virago to watch this. You should turn your mic volume up. Uh, sure. I believe I can do it now. There you go. That should be better. Ah, uh, the music was louder than I expected it to be. So tell me if that's good or bad or. This is why I hate delays. Much better. Okay, fantastic. So, Zadie, I only say, first of all, uh, this is not going to be super advanced or anything. There is shit here which they will grow out of doing. This is purely for their first ever attempt, as the majority of the stream will all be uh, uh, learners. So, to start off, um, when you're fighting Virago, it is in a square arena for phase one to four, no matter what the rotation is. Um, will that stay? Fantastic. Will it? Okay, cool. So, much better. Okay, so, there is a little rock thing over the west, and I'll explain what that is later along with obstacles and stuff and there's something over here that will all be explained in a short while so first thing to stress is don't mind me i'll just flame like a god church oh my god it's everyday bro okay so first thing to stress is that when you start fighting for arco i don't know if it's intended or not but your compass can get quite fucked up like it'll point in a random direction now I have seen people who have over 100 kills still fuck this up. You're tied to a solo next. There you go, much more accurate. So, the most important thing is just to make sure that your compass thingy is pointing north. That's what the compass looks like, right? Accurate. Okay, so make sure it's facing north. 
and Virago will be placed off oh, of fuck's sake, I forgot I can't see this arrow thing. Will be moved to about this location here. So the base tank will move uh, Virago to this area, not not in the proper corner, like some idiots, but you know, around this area. The DPS wants to stand around here in relation to him. Bear in mind obviously this will be northeast, this will be around north central ish. Um, there will be one person, me, who is going to be out here somewhere. Um, don't stand with me. For the love of God, do not stand with me. I'll explain why. So, Virago has two basic attacks. He either sends out a blue orb, which um, is not fun, I can guarantee you that. Um, basically, if it lands on someone, the damage is split amongst everyone. So, if it went to the DPS pile, which where you all are, that's fine, you know because you're just not going to much damage to all of you maybe you know a thousand maybe two thousand at most his other one is he'll put a message saying um Virago sent a bomb at you and a red bomb is coming at you there we go a red bomb is coming at you this thing is not okay so the way this works is it does a thousand damage increasing by a thousand per person that's in a seven by seven square so if we put um a big nice big square around me and a smaller one this is actually much better off than actually doing an actual kill so anyone inside the bigger square this one here will add to this damage so there are me plus one person plus someone else plus someone else plus someone else meaning you're doing this wrong uh, that's one two three four five thousand damage now everybody in this square will take that damage. So me and this poor bastard are all going to be taking 5k damage each. He also will drain your um, adrenaline and it will turn your defensive prayers, turn defensive abilities off. So if I'm alone, by my lonesome, and you guys are where you're meant to be, and it's just me here, I'll take uh, 2k. Which is, you know, much better. If you are here, and I seriously am struggling so much to see my little arrow thing. If you are in this pile and you see the message that a bomb's come after you, run away, get by yourself and just stand somewhere. Let it hit you, then run back. You will get blue bombs coming with it as well um, when you run back, but that is, that's fine, it, it's okay. Um, that's basically one of the hardest things about Virago is learning placements. If you are getting bombs, you're too far away, if you're being hit by melee hits, you're too close. The reason for that is Virago's hits are all in AoE. So if Virago is um, this square, his attack thing looks similar-ish to this. Where at the front it's about, it is double the range. Oh, bye Mike. At the front it's double the range of the behind him. Now it doesn't really matter too much where you're standing when you're learning, but ideally don't stand directly in front of him unless you're squiggle. Stand ideally to the side, or better yes, behind him. Um, and just make sure you're not too far away, because again, if you're miles away, like over here, bombs will come after you. And if you're too close, like here, his swipes are gonna hit you. Um, so for this phase, let's see let's, let's, what we can get rid of. Let's keep this nice and neat. Okay, that looks fine. Um, back to black. So if Vrog will be here, you guys will be over here-ish. Uh, Squiggle will be standing here. I'll be standing over here. So we'll put uh, B for bank, S for Squiggle, and DPS, which is the rest of you. Now there's one more roll, which is called TL5. Um, drop straight available. Weird notification. So the last roll was called TL5. Their job is to go through this rock thing, climb up, do some weird obstacle course around here, get to a ledge that's here, jump over, and now they're on this ledge thing way above the rest of us. Um, and there's the little uh, plank thing here from, you know, walk the plank. So the point of this is he's going to walk over to here, or wherever, Voke Virago, Virago should now walk over to here, in which case obviously you guys are going to be in the way, so you need to move away, 
you know, like move maybe like you know here. So when Virago's here, obviously you're still at a good decent distance from him. Um, Squill will run, will run all the way over here, Voke him so Virago faces this way. This guy can jump off the plank onto Virago's back, and then Virago's health can go down to zero. And Virago will jump around three times. You'll see his shadow. Dodge it. If not, it hurts. It. Uh, what the fuck is this? This is art in its finest form. <laughs> Microsoft Paint Explanation of Virago. So Virago will jump around and you'll see um, his shadow around. So, shit. This isn't um, the old OG Microsoft Paint. Where you could have like... Oh shit, you can. So he'll, he'll be jumping around. Yeah, you'll see his shadow and shit. Run away. Like, if you see... Um, a shadow coming it's a massive giant rock pokemon jumping on you show sure, away and dodge it doesn't matter where you go so the fast phase one phase one is in a way the most complex out of the four uh, out of well is the second most complex out of the five really um and for the first time after that it's really really easy like you know you just stand there you move there you dodge these things nice and easy so the nice thing about Virago, and this is true with all rotations, um, is every single phase he adds a new mechanic. So, ooh, oh, I can't delete anymore. That's sad. So I'll quickly delete all of this and re-add the new square because the next phase is another square. Um, and Virago will fall down to the center. You know, he's fat. Um, again, he will face one direction and he will be turning around quite a lot, so there's no need to try to always be not in front of him, but you know, moving to the side with stuff will help. So, on this phase, you learn about you have, you have to be, a, be mindful of two more mechanics. So, firstly, there's his reflex. This is a probably most important thing for DPSs to understand. So Virago will do these smash animations and I wish I could draw this or animate this. I really wish I could. I might have to go pay Zadie to do this. I mean what? Um but basically if we were to draw a stick person, this is this is about as good as this is gonna get. This is Virago if he lost lots of weight. Uh he literally crouches down and uh there we go. Seriously, there we go. He crouches down, puts his arms together in like a fist shape. This is really frustrating. How the fuck does AD do this for hours on end? I will get the hang of this. So he crouches down, makes a big fist of his hands, and uh, he basically falcon punches someone who is standing there. Um, this is a bleed. Um, um, he becomes Slove. <laughs> yes, he becomes a Slove. So he um, will do his bleed five times. So I'll explain the one time he doesn't, but he does five of these where he crouches, stands up, crouches, he'll turn to face someone else, do it again, turn again, do it again. Um, so he's done a total of five times. He'll then do three attacks, which can either be um, the big, the bomb of destruction, the blue one, or it can be his swipe. Um, count three of these, then stop attacking. You can see all the mechanics on Arch Monsters, by the way. Yes, but a lot of people who have not been to Virago before will find that when they first go there, that um, they struggle a lot with it. Unless you mean I can show what it looks like on there. Frying Pan Man has received Spider Leg Middle Drop. Okay. Okay, that guy can go and fuck himself. 40 kills maybe 41 and he's gained all th three pieces <sighs> no no comments no comments yeah that's what i mean um yeah i've never actually used this before so this could be really helpful learn oh my fucking god 
I'm not uh, Panzo. That's your new name. Um, this is really helpful. Thank you. So I'll swap, swap the screen over to be my RuneScape. Bank, can you help me build it? Later? Yeah, I'll help. I'll assist you, mate. Um, okay, so over to RuneScape. So the swipe. I'm not sure what else you'd expect. He just, you know, swipes. His blue bomb. That's red bomb. This is the blue bomb. You know, he puts his hands out. He throws it. You know, doesn't give a shit. Um, and the red bomb, which you don't really need to see too much of, is this. So, in fact, can we see? There we go. So that is the animation of his um, bleed. You'll see this five times, except for once, where it's four. Um, and then you'll see three hits. They can either be the melee swipe or the blue bomb. You count three of these, you stop attacking. You literally just click the square next to you. You know, don't move too much. Don't run them fucking marathon. Just move like a square, stop attacking, and he will do more swipes or bombs or whatever. Afterwards, he will do a red bomb, which looks like this. The second you see that is when you can get back on attacking him. Um, I doubt I can show you it. No, you can't. But what would be nice is if I can show you what the uh, red bombs look like. It actually shows you everything. This is really helpful. So you'll see a red glowy orb somewhere, and that needs to be shot, be clicked to be shot into Virago. Um, got assist. Oh, he's got, he can't even get to a preference. Um, when I go and go into him, he will crouch down like. Uh, nope. Nope. There we go. So he's crouching. I wish you could rotate this. So he's crouches down, looking all weak and shit. Um, you spam click him, get a bar at the top. I'll, I'll obviously, I'll be uh, talking you through it. And then afterwards, as it says, you have 10 seconds to do as much damage to him as physically possible to weaken off the next piece of his weapon. So the premise behind Farago is you want to be doing objectives, so we call them each phase, except for phase three. Phase three is just a DPS first. Phase one, you've got to jump on, you have to have the tail five jump on his back to get the weapon piece. Phase two, you're shooting these red bombs into him to weaken him to this state, where you can do the damage to blow him up to send off um, the, the, the next piece. It, good question, Panda. If you don't do enough damage, he stands back up and he gets health back. You have to then send three more bombs into him, these red bomb, red uh, orb things, and then you have another attempt. Um, to be perfectly honest, if we're getting six or seven of us into the fight, there should be no reason why we can't do it. It should be really, 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 really simple. But if not, we have to send three more bombs and we'll try again. Um, the general idea of doing this is to send in uh, two thresholds. So for magic, for example, you send in wild magic and asphyxiate. Then you focus on your biggest damage abilities, like uh, sonic wave and fire breath, for example. Um, provide that happens, and then we get to the next phase. Once he stands up, you're going to zero health again, and we move on to phase three. So phase three is nice and simple, um, depending on the rotation. So this is why. Um, uh, it's good for me to come watch this. So this is why um, we're waiting until the 25th to do this. Every Wednesday, um, he will change his rotation. Uh, so it starts off being ceilings. That's technically the first rotation. Then it goes to something called um, scopulus. Try to remember this off the top of my head. Uh, ceilings, scopulus, vitalis, green bomb, team split, the end. So... I'll teach you the other ones later, but the one that's coming up is called uh, Team Split. So Vargo does, you know, he looks constipated, or obviously he looks like he's, you know, pushing a big one out. But basically, what will happen is you have a piece of text pop up. Um, we're about to paint for this. Hello, hello. It's something like you're telling the story with the end. <laughs> no, the end is actually a rotation name. Um, so we'll head back to paint. So phase three, exactly the same. Um, 
it's a big, it's a big square. It looks exactly the same as before. Um, Virago spawns as usual, and after about two hits, you stop attacking straight away, and he will do um, team split. So you'll get a box pop up. It may be a screen. Everybody gets this, and there'll be text along it. Um, let's go for that. So the color of the text is what you want to care about. Like you can read it if you want. You can look at your own character if you want. But the color of the text is the best thing to look at. It will either be blue or it will be red. Now the you also see a two by two square, which is the same color, so randomly. Um, so it'll be red or to be blue. If you got the blue text, you run and hide into the blue box. So this goes into there, and this goes to there. I love how those boxes are both blue. But yeah, one of the boxes will be red, one of the boxes will be blue. You run and hide inside of it. Um, you have quite a lot of time to do it, so it shouldn't be too difficult to do that. If you're not going to, um, you see the box doing that yet? Yep, you can do. It stands out a lot. Sadly, it won't show you here. Uh, as you can see, all it shows you is him's constipated look, but it really stands out a lot. Um, so you're going to stand in it, and if you don't think you're going to make it, it does nine thousand damage to you exactly. Was it eight thousand? I was doing so much hard mode, I don't remember anymore. Um, we'll quit nine thousand for now. So basically, if you have above, but if you have above nine thousand health, this cannot kill you. So you'll be safe. I'm pretty sure it's less than nine thousand, but um, we'll call nine thousand for now. As I'd rather see too much health than not enough. Um, the only awkward thing about this is that sometimes they think the box can be under him, and then it does become quite hard to see. But someone should say if they see it under him, and it's a bit of an old bitch to click on him. But literally just right click him and click walk. Oh, I can't. I can't. Right. Yeah, but just literally just right click him, click walk, and under it. If all else fails, eat up, and you'll be fine. Um, this phase is simple. You deal with that. You get him all the way down to zero health. There is no other objective. Jump to zero health. Deal with team split. Deal with um, when you have to get off. And rinse repeat. Like everything you've learned from the previous phase, other than the red orb that goes into him, applies here. Um, so when you're finally done with that, you move on to phase four. Now phase four is... Uh, the long haul so it's the slowest and longest phase and sadly there's nothing you can do to speed it up so Virago will spawn and each of the corners is able to have a waterfall so it will only be one and the whole screen will burn in fact no that doesn't help in the slightest bit so your, so the side of your screen will burn with fire and stuff so you know you will you will see it happen a lot it's literally everywhere um, look around for a waterfall they stand out a lot run and stand behind it now a lot you can stand here here or here if you try and stand anywhere other than the three spots shown uh, like you know or in the water, for example, you will get hit for about 10,000 damage. This one's not an exact figure, it's just a shit ton. It's more than 9k every time. So, you know, you don't want to be hit by that. Just hide there. You can surge into it. You won't mess up. Mess up. This is really easy. So, Virago will then do his normal attacks. He will do his bleeds. He'll do his uh, off. Um, I've seen hit more than 9k. Guaranteed. I've seen people get wrecked for that shit. And Che Man, don't fucking up her. You have one kill. Don't out. Uh, you know, talk about. All right. If you say so, I'll I'll take your word for that. But you can eat up. I know you can eat up a tanky. I've seen people do it. But I've seen people have like. I have two, and two she is probably right. Well, I mean, if you want to take other people over me, chain, go right for it, I don't care. But anyway, back to what I was saying. 
Um, you can eat up and avoid it if you don't think you're going to make it, but I'll be very, very surprised if you don't. It, you can run from literally anywhere. Uh, were they on Mani Aura? Probably. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, you can run from literally anywhere to any of the waterfalls and have time left over, you know, easily. So, you have nothing to worry about. He'll do his normal attacks, he'll do his bleeds, you'll see all five of them. He'll then do three attacks and you have to get off again. Three reflects. And then after that, he will do his another waterfall. After three waterfalls, you can then get him to zero health and you get to the final phase. Um, one thing I should probably explain before you go to the final phase is when I say you have to get off, what happens is he does a soul link with someone, which if we go back to RuneScape and you're back to this interface. This is really cool to teach with. Uh, learn. So, I don't know, it'll be, it'll be a lot higher up than that. It'll be phase two, it will show it. Target link. So he puts his one hands up and it goes purple. Um, he will link with one person and any damage you try to do to Virago won't go to Virago. It goes to that one poor bastard instead. So if you have someone standing here and it's being reflected onto him and everybody says, whoops, I hit Virago once for say 2k damage and there's six of us, you can say rip to him. So it's important to get off early. So that is why we get off and that's why it's really, really crucial that no one does, you know, even one extra hit. Uh, 146. In fact, I bought one today. It's like 146.5. I swear it's like the last thing I bought. One forty six and a half. I bought these for a friend. Um, so back to the drawing. I realize I'm really bad at swapping screens because I never do this. But so when you finish off the last phase, or the fourth phase, you go to the fifth phase, which is literally a DPS test. So clear the whole thing, as it won't look like that. It's a much, much more narrow path, which I believe is three squares wide uh, like I said Zadie this is for beginners who are not going to have shields on them like this is for people who have never been to Virago most of them haven't even been to Rax so like I said like twice earlier this is for the absolute basics so Viro spawns about here and the very first thing he will do is yeah but tips are Gucci well here's the thing if people try too hard to do all the fancy tips and tricks and shit which are nothing more than bonuses they're gonna fuck up and they'll make more mistakes let them focus on the basics get that understood then they can move on so Keep it, like I said at the very very start, I'm keeping this simple. Once we start, we're not even going to do proper kills to start, we're in practice mode. Like once they get used to that, then we can think about tips and tricks, and we can think about DPS rotations and when to sunshine and all that good shit. Um, so, last phase is a path, and there is water all around you because, you know, oh, it's, it's be quite, you, you don't mind it, it's just. I don't want them trying to. I don't want them doing anything more than the bare basics of it, because I can see them trying to be fancy and fucking shit up. So have water all around you, either side, front and back of him. Um, and you'll have one person at the back, which will be me. And you'll have everybody else against this wall around here. So, important thing to mention is you have to stay against this wall. You can't even go one square away from it, it has to be against that wall, otherwise you'll get bombs. So the way this phase works, 
simple in the simplest of forms is the damage Farago does to our team moves him this way. Damage we do to him moves him this way. Very basic concept, AD. Um, so the only things to think about are the first thing he'll do are his team split. These start off over here, box one, box two. And again, they will be the same colors as before. You have the thing pop up saying which one you are. Go and stand in it nice and easy. Run straight back down to here. And every time he moves one step back, you move one step forwards. If he moves one step forwards, you move one step back. Now, it's important thing to pay attention to on this phase, really, other than when to get off, is his bleed, because this can happen to anyone. So if I swap this back over to RuneScape, um, you will see under the melee abilities, there is an ability called Dismember. Is that name? Yeah, Dismember. So pay attention to what that symbol looks like, because that's the exact same symbol for his bleed. If you see this, use Freedom straight away, as this will do a lot more damage than we do. He will hit you hard for this, and this will increase his damage, making him push a lot, lot harder. If we do manage Drago decently, this will be the hardest phase, because I don't know how good everyone's gear is going to be. If Freeman's on cooldown, it won't be on cooldown. Because he can only do five bleeds, and the chance of you getting more than one is very low. So only use freedom for this. You shouldn't have to use it too much. You won't do. Because after his set of bleeds, it's ages to his next lot, and your freedom will be off cooldown. It's more than 20 seconds. So, once you... St if... Just... Just if it happens, let's pretend you do get a second bleed, or your freedom will cooldown for whatever reason. Uh, you can use escape which can be a bit bugged because it can say um, no target destination if that happens you run backwards like we'd rather you run back and take bombs than to stay there and get the bleed as soon as you see that this symbol gone um, the dismember run back like run straight back with a pile when we say off we get off obviously and there are obviously strategies for how you're going to push him harder like sunshine together or onslaught together for those who have it but we'll explain more about that when we're actually in the practice modes. But the idea is that you want to push him all the way back. Every time he moves back, you move forwards until... Um, shit, I'm on the wrong uh, screen. That's not a big of a deal. So every time he moves back, you move forwards and forwards and forwards. Now when he gets to the right near the end, you know, when he's about here, the person who's created more omens, I'll explain that is afterwards, Simply clicks it, does a cool animation, and he will die. Um, oh, I'm actually having a direction today. Yeah, go use it on Vindictor. When, you, when he does his phase 2, every other, um, or the second uh, range that he does, I use devotion on that. Or use it at Greg, uh, you know, whenever it's up. Um, when he dies, he falls, we get loots. Uh, in five piles, because yay loot. If he pushes us all the way this way, and we, he gets over to here, uh, we will die. Instant killed. Which is uh, not fun. So, that is pretty much the basics. I'm actually heading out very soon, so this has come out quite well. Now, I'm going to go through this again, but as the perspective of a TL5, which is the only role we are potentially missing. It's officially meant to be a chain man's role, but I, I want to have a backup just in case someone else wants to learn it and chain man fucks up with it. Because, no offense, you chain man, you're not the smartest tool. So, phase one, you have the uh, box here. As you know, you um, are going to be doing all the optional courses. It's really, really simple. There's a ledge here you jump to to get over to here. Is this going to be recorded so I can watch this back? Yes, it is constantly being recorded. Um, yeah, unless you're AD and you bug the game. Um, this is recorded and I will upload it to YouTube probably. Um, not probably, I will do, 100%. Um, so you get set up here, you're over here. Now, there's a crack thing here. 
it's the only crack here it's quite obvious um, there is what's known as a vote spot which is basically where you should be standing now not at all times as soon as you vote for Argo you want to stand on it so it's not on this crack all right it is not on the crack it is one square in fact, let me write this down, take a picture, and I might fucking clan it. Oh, I might, I might post it to the clan website. It's one square east. So, chain, because I knew how much you struggled with this before. Let, let's make this nice and simple. If this square is the middle of the crack, and this square is one east of it, it's not this one, it's right here. Um, oh, don't do that. I thought I got Ralph. Um, so, you stand here, you vote, um, you vote Virago, he'll be like here. He'll move this way to you, and then he'll turn around uh, to face this base tank, which is Squiggle. When you see Virago's health get to about 45k, again, Zadie, I know this is way too high on normal kills, but we're being safe by this, you want to have at least one inventory space free. And you want to click the end of this ramp thing to jump onto Vargo's back. Then you get Vargo's health down to zero, then it's done. No, you guys make me all fucking confused. Don't on me. Well, how about this then? Instead of you thinking everybody who tells you advice is correct, pick one person who you know is correct and only listen to them. It will make you much less confused. Because technically, the spot here can be correct if you are if your base tank does the old meta so some people will say that which technically can still be correct but the simple way of doing it is to do it from here and you don't need to know why that's just how it is um, now I said before there are t there's one specific instance where you won't see the five smashes or the five bleeds same thing um, so during phase two the second you drop down um box the second you drop down he actually lands crouched down and stands up like it can be glitched it most of the time is but that's what's meant to be so as soon as you land though you may not see it there is a bleed so as soon as you land it's one he'll then do four visible smashes and then those are the last five you know, you know, that's the, that's the, all five done and then he'll carry on so this is the hardest part for TL5 genuinely because this is the thing that they always forget so you land and it's one then me as the bomb tank will run in to Virago with Squiggle being base tank I will vote Virago uh, like that there you go. I vote Virago Virago now faces me He'll do two more smashes. I have so you know, Squiggle's taken the invisible one. He's taken this the first real one, so that's the second one. He will turn to me. I will take the third. I will take the fourth. And the second you see this third one chain, you should be running in close. The second you see this fourth one, you vote him. And Varaga will turn to you and do the fifth bleed to you. You use freedom straight away, then you run back out. And Squirrel will also vote back as soon as you've freedomed it. And you take number five. So your role is called TL5, which stands for Top Law 5. So Top Law is phase one. You're standing on the ledge thingy. You're luring him over. And the five means you take the fifth bleed. On the next phase, which is um, phase three, where we have the team split, there are no bleeds. Top bleach, top law. It depends on if you are a meme team or not. Officially, it's top law. Um, so phase four, um, so phase three, there are no bleeds. So you don't need to worry about it. You are just a DPS. Uh, phase 4 there are but you have ages to be those them it's after the team split so after the, you see um, the two boxes and you have the text come up um, 
it gives you more attacks, then we'll start doing bleeds. Again, Squirrel takes the first one and two. I take three and four. You should vote straight away when the fourth one's done. You take the fifth, you free them. You do this uh, twice on phase four. And then you move to phase five. And that's where we have the narrow one. And you will have the full weapon piece. You know, you will have weapon piece A from um, the phase one when you jump when you jump onto Vargas back. That's why you need a free inventory space, otherwise you can't jump. The weapon piece B comes from phase two. When we all attack him when he's crouched down, a piece drops on the floor, you pick that up. No one else but the TL5. And the phase four, after the third waterfall explodes, he drops the foot last part, which is a handle. It looks like, you know, handle. Like that. You click any of the pieces and it will combine into the Mall of Omens. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Um, I should sell commission art, like Zadie does. Um, when the variables at the very end, it will specifically say in your chat that only the Mall of Omens can finish off uh, Virago. Literally, all you have to do is click on the mall in your inventory, and it, that, it does the rest. Like, you do not need to do any more. You click it, and Virago will... You have an animation where you jump onto Virago's face, you smash him, you jump off, he falls over here, dead. Make sure you're close enough. This is a good point. Remember how I was saying you want to stand around here? Well, there are two viable spots you can be on. As TL5, when you need to um, maul her, maul him, her, whatever, you need to be standing on this spot, the front one, and you can maul him. And you jump up, drop him down, you get loot. I'm not going to teach you base tank or bomb tank here, because it would take far too long, and that's minus rules job. Like, we know what we're doing. TL5 is the only ambiguous role, because no one properly knows it in our clan so chain has agreed to learn it if anyone else is down to learn it i am happy to personally teach you whether we do one to one or whatever um we'll have to see how it goes on wednesday so if you have any more questions ask here um or if this is my youtube video you're watching because i've decided that i'm definitely uploading this put it in the comments I'm down to learn it. No, daddy, you're not. Because Chairman is a retard who will, for the last of it, ignore me entirely and listen to you and then fuck up. Then blame some stupid reason. Right, so I'm assuming the stream's caught up. Obviously, you can't hear my own voice back. Otherwise, you'd hear me echo. Um, but I assume no one has any questions. So, I will be ending the stream now and uploading it. It sounds mean, but there's a big chance that it happen. Uh, it will sound mean, Shane Man, but if you want to ignore the person that's trying to teach the whole clan to do it, I'm just not going to take you and I will replace you. Straight up, I will replace you. Because you're not fucking up for the whole clan. Anyway, if you have any more questions, do PM me in the game. I'll see you next guys, thank you for watching.